This episode of the Barclay Street Podcast is presented by the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation, a proud partner of the Bulldogs. Join us in helping kids understand the importance of loving the game, not the odds. For tips on talking to your kids about the risks of sports betting, visit lovethegame.vic.gov.au. Hello and welcome to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street. That's hashtag Barkley Street for all you groovers out there on the social media. It is my great pr- pleasure, as always, weekly and every week and every week and every week, Eason Wood, the gloriously boring, handsome bastard himself. Eason, how are you, my friend? Oh, those intros are getting better and better, Tosh. I'm, I'm well, mate. <laughs> unscripted. They're unscripted. <laughs> Oh, just so original. Love it. <laughs> Never <laughs> know where up? you're going to go, whether it's going to be complimentary, uh, derogatory, or mixture of the two. Or a bit of both. Yep. Yeah. Always nice right. to have that, little, that real Bob Sprinkle, bit of you both. You've got to have a balance. You've got to get compliment. Yeah. You've got to get elements on the plate. You know, you've got to have the, <laughs> you've got to have the acidity to cut through something. <laughs> sort of. Oh, God. Uh, how'd you dust yourself off, mate? Tough weekend. Yeah, look, it was it was a tough weekend, mate. The um, the game certainly didn't go to plan, um, and certainly didn't look how we wanted to, um, particularly after a dis- disappointing performance the week before. So, yeah, it was a a bit of one, um, bit of one, Bob. But um, yeah, we're looking to to have hopefully learned from that this weekend, and um, yeah, and really really bounce back against the power. It's always layered and complex i understand that and and most people do what if there are a couple of things to from the weekend that you think the group misfired on or didn't get right or didn't meet the intensity of which what what would have been the key points out of it well as you said there's always always the layers layers to it but um What's been a we're probably going away from what's been a hallmark of when we when we play well as a group so we've had conversations this week around um how does it feel when we when we play at our best, and and what are those elements that um, that we have that you know are, are present when we are we are playing at our best? I won't go into the detail yeah. of what they are, but we've had some good. Um, can't give us can't give us one. Come on, mate. <laughs> no, like Talking well, swings here, mate. <laughs> um, what can I say? Look, we, we've we've been I think a real hallmark of when we're um, really firing on. And, and at, at the peak of our game is we've got that even contribution of spread and we're doing the the real little things well, like whether it's little knock-ons, little blocks, um, and if people aren't having their, their best days, they're still contributing in those little moments um, in those contests, um, which might not necessarily go down on the stat sheet, but um, they go a long way to either gaining your territory or giving you opportunities to score or stopping the opposition from scoring. So... Um, we feel like we're in our, at our best. We're really connected in that way and we're really playing for each other. So um, yeah, it'll be great to get back to that. So Port this week, how, we'll get to them in a minute, but what's the uh, what's the living arrangements? What's the life like at the moment for an AFL footballer with all this COVID chaos? <laughs> yeah, so another spanner as always with, with COVID, another spanner thrown um, this week. So we've uh, the... Bulldogs uh, players and and playing and all the staff have had to um, quarantine for sixty hours before the game, um, and that includes people you live with. So if you weren't able to, the people you live with weren't able to quarantine, obviously because they have they have to work. Or in my situation, if I can't lock my kids up, they'll go mad. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, we've moved into a hotel in the city. Um, right, we were quarantining there for sixty hours before, yeah, before the game. And I think right. that was a, a, a requirement from the SA government. I think for us yeah, gotcha. to be able to play Port and then for them to be able to let back into SA. Yeah, yeah. So many Tetris. layers, many yeah. layers, mate. Yeah, Tetris. The old uh, lifestyle Tetris. How's that going on the home front? Is that, I imagine when you're calling in from hotel quarantine, you've just watched your fourth movie, you've had room service. <laughs> Do you just temper exactly what you've been um, up to when you when well kids at let's home just say let's just say the, the conversation a a mad. <laughs> well let's just say the conversation leading into it uh, and discussing the the various avenues was a little frosty um, and that's to be that's to be well and truly understood um, 
And in particular for, for us, our, our, our little girl, uh, Matilda's had an operation this morning. She's had to oh, have her no adenoids way. out. So, oh, um, no so way. that the, the glands behind the, behind yeah. the nose, um, which will hopefully help her sleeping. But, um, Jeez, that's yeah, got to be just hard to be away. Of, yeah, hard to be away. Um, it's not something they wanted Tiff to have to do on her own, and obviously wanted yeah. to be there for a little till. But it's just, yeah, it's just the, it the way the cookie crumbles at the moment. The realities um, of it. Try and make yeah, uh, yeah, make a bad situation work as well as it can. Uh, how are we looking this week, health wise, of the team? Of Steph Martin is. Well, do you know if he'll be available? Yeah, he's available. Much um, change to the team. Well, yeah, Steph's available, so there's an opportunity there. Um, and I think uh, on our main session yesterday, we had 40 players out on the track. So those are some pretty, okay. um, yeah, really, really great numbers, um, particularly yeah, coming into this time of the year. So, um, you know, luck's a big thing in, in finals and health's a big part of that. So yeah. um, it, it, we seem to be getting um, a lot of our boys, uh, yeah, available and, and fit and firing. So... That's uh yeah, that's one piece of the puzzle, I suppose. So um I think never before have the, the top four teams all played each other in the last round. It's kind of one of those bizarre, bizarre. Sort of <laughs> anomalies. Um is that do you which way do you kind of look at that from? Is it um is that sort of worry you or are you more like this is the challenge that probably the you know the group needs to sharpen up before the finals? Um probably the latter. Yeah, definitely the latter. That's the correct answer <laughs> for all the pull dog support. If it was for the all other all way, dogs just want us tuning in, just held their breath for a few seconds. Nah, to be honest, we're shitting ourselves a bit and uh, wouldn't have minded an easy kill, to be oh honest. God, could you imagine a response like that? <laughs> did you, speaking of a response you don't normally receive, did you see Libba's Instagram this week? Are you allowed to talk uh, about that? Should I have not brought that up? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, it, it's since been taken down, hasn't it? So. Yeah, yeah, of course. I don't know. You tell me. You're you're the one not telling me what was in the team <laughs> review, so I don't know what no. the rules are here. No, well, he he put up a where all the players in the competition uh, have a deal with with Telstra and and Tom. Um, yeah, obviously, had, we had to do a post of why you play footy. So there's a lot and of he, heartfelt, a lot of fans and family yes. and teammates yeah. and yeah. And Tom all took it the, in a different direction as. All for the love of the game, of course. Yeah, as as he can, and he just put up a, a photo of a water cash, and this is why I play. <laughs> Some of the best satire <laughs> I've seen because of the layers to it. Um, yes, um, I don't well, remember what your question was, Bob. You, I've gone off. No, on a I no, no yeah, I've you, done a Bob. You've started running your own. You've started running your own podcast, which is uh, getting too confident. Getting too confident. Which boots. That's right. Hey, um, have you have you without getting um you know, too far down the road. Have you thought too much about, um, you know, the conjecture around home finals and whether you should, um, you know, if, you, if say if the dogs finished top, for example, would you prefer to play at an empty, empty Marvel Stadium or a neutral ground with, with crowd? Uh, yeah, I, have, I guess I have thought about it. Um, I don't. I honestly don't know. It's above. It's above me, Bobo. But it's like I want to play. I having your own. Playing. Have it. Do you mean having your own thoughts is above you, or just <laughs> the actual? <laughs> that's 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 more what I'm used to. I I, I understand <laughs> yeah, you're not. I that. understand you're not Gillen McLaughlin, mate. That you're not gonna oh, like. Oh. I understand this. I, yeah. Okay, so the, I don't need to even though you, that. Uh, you've got the same hairdo and all. That. I understand all that, but now just yeah. what yeah. like your personal yeah. preference is what I was kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I look, I, I'd love to play at Marvel, but I, playing in front of no crowd, particularly in a final, would be very strange. Um, mm. Like you, the, the, the crowd is such an incredible, um, particularly with momentum. It's just you really get the energy. Um, and I suppose we play it for, for fan, like the whole reason we're playing is to entertain and to, for fans to be behind us. So it's a bit strange to not play in front of them. Um, but look, I, yeah, I'd play um, at a ground if uh, that's not Marvel. Um, yeah, as long as the other team wasn't advantaged by it, uh, that'd be, yeah. be fine to and prefer to play in front of a crowd. Yeah, I can say, how's your lip recovered? It looks a bit, it looks a bit <laughs> bulbous there. You, 
Yes. You, you, um, it hasn't recovered well, Bob. Of, no. Yeah, it hasn't recovered well. Um, so I put my teeth, my teeth went through my lip against Essendon yeah. um, and come out the other side. So I've got a few stitches here. Um, but the worst thing is there's uh, these ulcers developed on the inside of my lip, oh, this which has been happy. horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> one of the worst injuries I've ever had. I haven't oh. slept for six days. It's so it got infected, and that's horrendous in, in its sense. So it's just been this throbbing um, mess. But the sense. boys haven't missed an opportunity to uh, to make light of it, which you'll absolutely yeah. love. We have a, a room aboard in the in the foot in the um, in the change room. So <laughs> it started as yeah, Woody Woody got fillers. So. They've, <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting called fillers this week, so it's been, it's been of, good fun. Just a little bit of Botox. Hey, just quickly, we've got a uh, we've got a very um, we've got Bulldog royalty about to join us on the other side of a break. Uh, one of the all time greats, one of the all time greats of the game, let alone the Bulldogs, is yep. going to join us very soon. But um, some big name retirees this week, mate. Um, Sean Burgoyne, a giant yes. of the game. Um, one of the more complete players and complete careers, you'd have to say. Yes. And you know, Dave Asprey, Premiership fullback, and Carl Hooker, all Australian. Um, but Eddie Betts, it's, it has sort of been Eddie yeah. Appreciation Week. Um, they, did you play on Eddie much? Did you cross paths heaps, with him? Heaps of times. And I would yeah. like to say I had the both the pleasure and the nightmare of playing on him <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> I'm sure you yeah, you did too. Like it was yeah, yeah, yeah. you're in you're in awe, but you're also like you can't you can't Panic. do that. What do you do? How do you stop? I have one, this one yeah. memory of him kicking um we played in the wet up against uh, up against Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. And it was a game where there was probably only like seven or eight goals uh, scored to win. And I think he kicked three or four of them. And one of yeah. them was on his left from the boundary in the yeah. wet. And I remember shaking my head, just being like, yeah, you, you don't have the right to do that. Um, yeah, yeah. That's not, it's not okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, and looking back at it, you're just you're in awe of what, what he did and the way that he's carried himself the whole time, just playing with absolute the sheer joy. Um, yeah, and yeah. to do that for, for 17 seasons. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, um, just hats off to him. And I've, I've had a bit to do with him over the journey. Um, he's a, a lovely guy and he's got a lovely family and yeah, just um, yeah, yeah, really yeah, credit to him for what he's, what he's been able to do. He's a beautiful man and he uh, stands for a lot more than just what he does on his uh, on the football field. Uh, this week's uh, game is Lifeline um, week, which I didn't I didn't quite realise, but the Bulldogs are teaming up with Lifeline Australia and the AFL to launch the We're All for Mental Health Supporters campaign this week. $39 donation helps Lifeline assist those who need it the most. Um, so to donate, download an AFL supporters care kit, visit lifeline.org.au slash donate. Um, so that's a good cause. Um, and if anyone else is struggling out there, um, yeah, do, you could do a lot worse and have a quick look at Eddie Betts's um, highlights reel as well. And a quick shout out too to Jared Harborough, who plays his last game this week. Gold Coast yes. Suns veteran, but started his football an ex -teammate AFL of ours. journey. Yeah, an ex-teammate of ours and a beloved, beloved ex-teammate of ours, um, Jared Harbro, an absolute uh, special human and a, and a wonderful footballer. Um, after the break, Easton, we have the great, the great Brad Johnson, <laughs> Bulldogs superstar, or was he just a Swedish exchange student, Brandon <laughs> Johansson? <laughs> we'll catch up with him after the break. Welcome back to the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street. And it is our great pleasure to welcome the Swedish exchange student himself, Brandon Johansson, the artist formerly known as Brad Johnson, Bulldog <laughs> games record holder, goal kicker extraordinaire, one of our favourite teammates, the lord of the locker room himself, Brad, not Bradley. Found that out the hard way. Brad Johnson, welcome <laughs> to Barclay Street, my friend. How are you? Uh, good, good to see you guys. It's uh, it's great to be on. Thanks for the thanks for the opportunity. Look, it's Brandon. I don't, where did Brandon Johansson start, Bob? Can you please uh, fill me in on? So you oh, just made it up, mate. You just would have uh, made it up. It no, would have been his own tangent. He's just sense. and he's just he's repeating. Sense. He's doing the Archie, mate. He's just repeating it as often as he can to then make it become a thing. Ethan um, has a problem with respecting his elders, and what he doesn't realise <laughs> is that life 
Life Learn the from Bulldogs. the best. Yeah, life <laughs> at the Bulldogs didn't start when you started, mate. There were things that happened prior to you. Not, yeah, not how I prior, said it. <laughs> prior to 2007. Uh, <laughs> my, my recollection is it was uh, Simon Garlic. When I got to the Bulldogs, he he – he would sort of wind you up about calling you Brandon Johansson and then it sort of took on this Swedish kind of connotations to it. But you, you seemed as bemused then as you as you do now. And it's almost Yeah, look, at, it's hilarious, isn't it, the evolution of the uh, of the nickname. I really love that, that aspect of it. Um, you know, there was, I think Brownie had, you know, Ronnie Johnson and all these other things. Yeah. Going on. <laughs> That's what I loved about the the locker room's the best part about uh, the footy club, isn't yeah. it, boy? Really, the, oh, the yeah. amount of fun that you have in the in the background there, where you sort of you know can can relax a little bit more than uh, than other spots are around the footy club. So um, yeah, it was it was great times. Do you find yourself um, regressing at all when you bump into old teammates? It just slots into exact like it is like time travel. The first five minutes of the conversation is kind of childish and immature and and exactly the same one you had 15 20 years ago it's quite quite a powerful sort of force in one's life i think yeah i i agree i think it's it's just it's just easy though isn't it like you know jumping on with uh with you guys today and the amount of time we we did spend to, together throughout throughout uh, our journey at the at the club together it it's just easy though isn't it and that's the that's the best part about you know whether you connect or not consistently you know you have your close mates and then and then the aspects of um, of just having that um, connection. So it's just easy to jump on and all, or when you catch up. It's just it's just a, an easy five minutes to see where each other's at and then uh, and let the fun begin. So I, I I love that fact, and I love the fact that we we try and catch up at, at least at least once a year. We haven't the last couple because of COVID, but it's always good fun when we get those opportunities. So John, I imagine you you know you follow the the footy club and the footy team still really closely, watching you know Eastern Plies trade. Um, how disappointed have you been with the shit that the boys have served up the last two weeks? Oh, that's a great way to put me under pressure with uh, that. Don't give him the satisfaction. Look how much he enjoyed that. He's, a, he's had the low half volley outside okay. off and he's just right. absolutely smoked no, no, no. it. I'll, 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 re- I'll, re- I'll, I'll reshape the question. Um, <laughs> you're better than you, that. You Actually, still, no, you're not. Are you, are you still a... <laughs> Are you still a passionate Bulldog supporter and do you still have high hopes for this season? <laughs> That's better, Bob. I think you just enjoyed go. swearing. I think that yep. was the, the yeah, best part. Yeah, just a little that. bit of edgy stuff for I the kids out there. Right. Uh, <laughs> it was, um, yes, I, I well and truly uh, am, am still passionate about uh, about the club and where, where they're going. We watch from afar, of course, and and really, really enjoyed it. I get to see as many games live as as I'd like. And um, but when we do get those um, those opportunities, it's it's great fun to watch the watch the boys, you know, apply their apply their craft and uh, and get a big win for the club. It's yeah, well and truly still in the uh, in the mix. The last couple of weeks haven't been exactly where um, the the boys would have liked, but ultimately, it's it's not on Eastern down back, and it's not on the. The forwards either we're, we're putting the blame solely on the midfield so they've got to, the star started midfield we've got to lift their game over the next uh next little period um to to get the boys over the line take some pressure off easton and his back back line boys and give the forwards some better look so it's well and truly on uh on bont yeah. and and uh and jackson and and locky to to get a ton and, and tom in the middle of the ground hey yeah uh, we had um we had marcus bont and pally on last week john and we we're chatting about Ella J and the song and all of that. You must be, I mean, you're incredibly proud of all your children, but she's she's a she's a rare talent, mate. Uh look, it's it's well and truly appreciated, Bob and Ella. Um sends her sends her love to everyone as well. And, and thanks you guys for for pumping that, uh pumping it up. But look, it was a it was a bit of fun. It's probably a little bit of, of my fault as well. I do I do radio down here in in Geelong at at K Rock on a Monday morning and we were talking about footy songs in in general and how good they've been over time and and a couple of the more recent ones were like who's what 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 would be the song of 2021 and the way the bond was playing at the time his name got brought up and we thought okay well let's see good what choice. we can create so I brought that home to Ella and the look I first got was a bit like well how am I how am I going to do this and uh, but what she was able to do in the end with um mm. with Sam Hansen down here out of 10 high fly was um yeah it was it was it was good fun it was a it was a great process that she she loved, and I think at the end they've they come with a bit of a country rock sort of element, and I think yeah. they were just more impressed to get um 
get uh, Marcus's name in the song. Getting Bontempelli into a song is not so <laughs> mouthful. It's a mouthful. <laughs> so, yeah. look, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been great fun and it's got a good vibe about it. It's a bit of a footy song and a few footy um, traits in it, like 4 and 20 pie and all that sort of stuff. But it's, um, it's, it's more importantly about what, you know, the Bond has been able to do for the, for the footy club and his leadership and the inspiration that he is for, for so many, not only at the Bulldogs, but in the league as well. How's life for you down there, uh, Ronnie, in uh, rural Victoria? A um, bit more freedom for you guys down there. And this time of year, I just got my first whiff of the jasmine during the week and that sort of, you know, conjures up, you know, finals and memories and all that sort of thing. What's, uh, what does it do for you this week? Well, I'm the same as you, Bob. I get I get bad hay fever, so this time of year is not the, it's not the best. It just starts to bubble away underneath, and you know you don't you don't want to run your nose at the best of times at the moment with what we're all going through. Yeah, that's so true. it's um it's it's one of those times, but it's it's it, we've been lucky down here in in Geelong. We we moved a long time ago, but yeah, we've got some, we've got a little bit more freedom and um, than what the the rest of Melbourne do in terms of moving around locally, but. Uh, we certainly feel for, for everyone. We're still all caught up in aspects um, aspects of it, and we just hope over the next couple of months we can, you know, get through it again and 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 push on. So yeah, but it's been it's been okay. We've obviously had the ring of steel and and aspects that allowed us to to live a little bit more freely during this whole couple of year period. Um, but still, we understand the elements of what everyone is uh, is going through as well, and it's tough for for so many. Hey, uh, Ronnie. We we don't have heaps of time because uh, Eason's got a he's got to duck off for for prep pretty soon. But we we do have a couple of questions we like to ask all of our guests. It's like just stock questions, Eason. I'll I'll Which let you. Which have gone through an evolution in themselves. Yeah. So we've got some we've got some uh, some heavy feedback uh, on the on the socials. <laughs> Uh, yeah, some yeah. things have got a little bit worn and a bit tired, a bit like Bob himself, and um, sure. we've managed to uh, yeah spice them up a little bit, and I think you'll enjoy them. So, Eason, do you want to do you want to kick us off, and then uh, and then Brad can Brad can bring us home with some of his gold. <laughs> All right. Well, um, an absolute favourite of uh, the Barkley Street podcast, and a favourite of yours on two, I'm sure too, Jono Archie Selleck, um, the mystery himself. Uh, has a nickname for every single person in the world. Did he have a nickname for you? God, I, he'd have to think he'd have a nickname for the 360-odd game games record holder at the club. Did he? And what was it? Oh, that's a that's a good question, Woody. Yeah, he didn't have a nickname as such, um, but all I remember what? is every time I'd have a, a, a shot for goal at training, it was Scotch, Scotch and, and Coke. Coke on this. Scotch, Scotch and Coke, Coke on this. <laughs> Scotch and Coke. <laughs> Sorry. And that's that's what I remember from the <laughs> from the great man is uh, is exactly exactly that. I think he owes me he owes me a few slabs of Scotch and Coke. From what <laughs> so that was his thing, wasn't he? Stand on the mark and yes. he's screaming Scotch and Coke because they were the stakes that were on offer, whether you kicked it or whether you missed it. <laughs> Oh <laughs> and he does it oh, yeah. now. He go, he'd always put a hundred bucks on it. He does that. He does that now. Really? It's not the Scotch and Coke. He's, he's upgraded to the money. And then whenever someone kicks it, he goes to someone else. He goes, "You couldn't lend us a hundred, could you?" <laughs> every <laughs> yeah, every time, every, every time. time. <laughs> hey, uh, Brad. We know you're um, you know a very successful um, commentator, and you're also the creator of Xena Sport, that which is the protective um, athletic garments for the female. Uh, footballers and other athletes. Is it not just football? Is it is it other sports as well? Yeah, look, it's Bob. It's it's any sport that's got contact yeah. or a collision. Yeah, so it's um yeah. it's going really well. Donna's um Donna's driving it really well, and um yeah, we've got a lot of sports now. Actually, our next sport is the uh, we've we've supplied it for the Paralympic goalball team. So oh, look out wow. for Tokyo in in awesome. uh, next week when they start the goalball girls will be will have it on, and we've got sports everywhere, Bob. From the main ones like soccer and basketball and. Um, lacrosse and softball are our, our main ones outside of outside of footy. We've got girls in the surf boats and martial arts and boxing and skateboarding. It's it's been good fun. It really has. It's a it's yeah. a vest for everyone and it's you know really light. Just chuck it on and um and away you go. You forget about it. We've got a lot of bulldog girls that wear it in the AFLW. They've been great ambassadors for us um throughout uh, the last couple of years as well. Yeah. So you're one of those, you know, painfully successful guys. Anything you sort of try your hand at, <laughs> very good at that. Try this. I'm good at that. Football, very good at that. Cricket, not so good. Um, <laughs> but 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 let's just let's just pretend for a moment that it all just went just into the top, just all fell apart. Everything and 
and you had to resurrect yourself as a, an, exo- a, an exotic dancer on the p and Fair Star. And part of, <laughs> part of that role is uh, you, you have to rid yourself of your name, Brad Johnson, not Bradley, and the new name you have to come up with is the, the, um, the name of your first pet and the street that you grew up on. That's your sort of the first and second name. If you were an exotic dancer on the P&O Fair Star, yep. what would your name be, Brad? Well, it would be it would be Buck Baggett. It's <laughs> <laughs> yes. going better than expected. This is so good. good. <laughs> Buck Baggett. Baggett. The oh, alliteration. Yep. Oh. So we had we, our first our first pet was was Buck, and I lived in Baggett Drive in in Hopper's Crossing. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, that was. That's the best yet. That's so that good. Is gonna put, that is going to put bums on seat. Oh, God, that's so satisfying. I might have to get on seat for the first time in my life and uh, oh. start an Instagram page, Buck Baggett. Oh, Buck that's Baggett. That's too awesome. good. <laughs> have you got well, one on to finish? On to the final face? question. Yeah, on to the final question, yeah. Buck. Um, speaking of names, <laughs> did uh, back in the day when uh, you were first – Signing up for a, an email account, probably you had the, the dial up on the internet then. You'd have to call up, um, get that set up. Um, what was your very first email address? Do you remember it? And please tell me it was embarrassing. Oh, crikey. Um, oh, I, I, I couldn't remember. Yes, it was dial up. Easton. You're right. You're yep. right with that aspect of, uh, of, of things. My first, my first email, I think my first email address is the one that I've still Still got oh, uh, pretty much today. That doesn't happen. That's as rare as hen's teeth. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's so, um, what, what, one of the few I've that changed. actually use your name. What's that? You're one of the few that actually use your real name in the email Well, it's, it's an abbreviation of, um, of, of initials in, in my name. But, um, yeah, don't give yeah, it away and don't tell us your password either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't, won't do that. Don't worry. It's, it's well and truly out there in the in the public domain. It wouldn't be that hard to uh, to track down. But um, but yeah, I, don't, I haven't sort of. Ch- I'm, I'm not the biggest when it comes to the IT side of life, uh, Eastern. So whatever whatever has sort of been put in place. Is I don't, I don't think having an email address means you're any kind of <laughs> tech guru. But <laughs> it won't it. get you a job at Tandy. I don't think having an email address. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, John, okay. mate, uh, thank you so much for giving up your time. We know how precious it is and taking you away from your family, but it's always great to see your smiling face. I know Bulldog supporters, um, if ever we need to see Brad Johnson, it's probably probably right about now. Um, and, yeah, you, you sort of touched on a bit before about the, you know, the connection, you know, that we have as, as former teammates, but it, it goes beyond that. Football clubs are just circles within circles. Um and despite the tough love I've given to Eason and the boys a couple of times this morning, we are still very much in the corner of the red, white and blue. Uh, we reckon that you, you can do a number on Port Adelaide this week, reset for a, for a massive finals campaign. Um, we think this group's pretty special, don't we, Brad? And um, pretty keen to see how far how far they can take it. But um, we're all in this together. Keep smiling, keep looking after each other, be kind to one another. Um, uh, but if you're in a Port Adelaide jumper, look out. <laughs> yes, uh, thanks, Bob. It's great, great to see you this morning. And, and Woody, all the very best, mate, for the, for the yeah, remainder thanks, of mate. the uh, season.